Um, who is Marvin? Star. Who is Star and Marvin? Is that the question? Well, that is the question indeed. Yeah. Star and Marvin. Well, he's basically a nut, but he's uh, has a nice sense of fantasy, and he can write songs, and he definitely has a lot of good energy to give out in the music, and. Uh, we just have to find a way to get it together to present it and uh, to project an image that you have to do in the record business. Um, there is now a record uh, produced by you, produced yeah. by Kevin Ayers. How does it come that a Belgian artist uh, can get Mr. Kevin Ayers as a producer? Well, because we're friends. We've been friends for quite a long time. We met when I was on tour over here. I can't remember how many years ago, five, six, I don't know. And um, he, Marvin has been to my house in Mallorca, and we played together, and that's how it happens. He gave you a call, and you came over. Yeah. Marvin, the ontstaansgeschiedenis van die plaat. Je hebt een uh, aantal dingen vroeger gedaan. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, hoe kom je ertoe om nu? eindelijk op platen te staan. Eindelijk, want uh, de plaat uh, had er al veel vroeger kunnen zijn. Al de omstandigheden die hebben wel gemaakt dat de muziek super geëvolueerd is en nu pas echt geworden. Dat kun je best horen op de plaat zelf. Dat is de muziek die ontstaat vijf jaar geleden. Um, over de plaat zelf, about the record itself, um, how has it been made in fact? Um, I heard it was in a very short time. Yes. Uh, it was made very quickly, I think, for four days, which is not nearly enough time to make an album. Plus the fact that um, I hadn't heard this, the, the arrangements beforehand. I mean, it was uh, it was a very quick job. Not enough, not enough time to change things drastically. You know, to make it uh, perhaps what it should be. I mean, I think I think it should it should have been different to the way it is. But given the time that the, that I had to do my work, I couldn't I couldn't change it. Uh, should I conclude that you're not pleased with the result? No, I'm pleased with the result because <laughs> the result is great. Um, in that amount of time to get up, I mean, I've never worked that fast in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't particularly like it. Um, I think that what this record shows is that uh, Marvin has uh, a talent as a songwriter and a good energy. I, d I don't think that it shows him at his, at his best potential. I think he has much more to say and much more to offer, musically especially. And well, we have to see about the live performances, see what that's all about. But I know that he has, um, as I said, a good sense of fantasy. And for the next project we work on, the next album, we'll have more time to be more experimental and more daring. Because this time we were a bit, um, I suppose the word is conservative. <laughs> conservative. And we, we had you know, a very short time, and as I said, Um, op de plaat, Marvin, staat de nummer Flight 505. Waarom noemt dat nummer nu Flight 505 en niet 707? En waarom dan ook een cover van de Stones? Ja, Flight 505 is uh, Flight 707 geworden omdat ik dat meer actueel vond. Maar uh, als het op royalties aankomt, dan zal uh, 505 wel uh, geldig zijn en 707 niet zeker. Hè? En waarom een cover van de Stones? Waarom? Uh, mag toch, zeker hè? Ik ben gek op de stunts. <laughs> Kevin is Kitricia's brother. Yeah, so that's why uh, there is a cover from the stones on the record. <laughs> What was the reason? What did he say? Because well, Kitricia's brother. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all know that's not true. Uh, I don't know why there's a cover of the stones. It's it's the sort of song that that Marvin writes anyway. <laughs> that particular song is very typical. Um, in fact, I, I wasn't sure when I first heard it whether it was something 
I mean, I remembered it from the old Stones album, but I wasn't. I still wasn't quite sure whether he had written it or whether it was the Stones. I mean, it was something so much like a lot of his songs, anyway. So we should conclude that uh, Starve and Marvin write songs um, of an equal quality of the Stones. Um, <laughs> what do you say about that? <laughs> Stop twisting my arm. Um, he writes songs with much more sense of fantasy than the Stones do. But uh, he hasn't achieved their professional ability. Uh, he's not uh, experienced enough. I'm not English neither. Not professional enough yet. I don't think anyway. He, need, he, he needs to get out, he needs to do some work on stage and find out what it's like to communicate with an audience and then remember that when he goes back in the studio and think about the music a bit more. Um, I think that um, w the, the problem is that he's been playing in his, uh, it's a problem I'm suffering from myself at the moment, uh, being on being on my own and playing to a, just to a tape recorder in your own room. Um, you, you lose touch with, with people and, and what's going on. And uh, I mean, I think that probably the sound on, on, the sound on this record is, is a little old fashioned. And the songs are a little old fashioned in the presentation. But that's because uh, he hasn't seen what's been going on enough. There's nothing wrong with the with the 60s sound, by the way. I, I, I mean, I love it myself. Um, als we niet verder naar de verleden dingen gaan kijken, maar wel naar de toekomst. Um, Kevin zegt dat je zou moeten gaan optreden. Zit dat ook in de bedoelingen? Ja, natuurlijk. Dat is, dat is te verwachten, want in feite heb ik wel enkel optreden gewoon. Wat ben ik nu zonder optredens? Als ik, als ik gewoon niet optreed, heb ik geen communicatie. Dus we kunnen jou binnenkort op uh, de plaatselijke podia verwachten in onze omgevingen. Ja, met een goede band hoor. Geen nood. En after the, the live gigs, uh, we suppose we can expect another record. Um, will it I be? Hope so. I, I think that I think that this record is is a good indication that the, that of the fact that. Marvin has talent as a songwriter and a producer of fantasies. Um, it's not as good an example as it could be, and I think there's much more that can be done and will be done, and that's the the plan for the future, yeah. to collect the energy together and find a way of putting it out so that uh, it sounds original and fresh. Um, would you be prepared to do another rush in four days? No. No. No, no way. Not me neither. You both um, want time. Well, you see, it depends. If um, if we work on an album to start with, like if um, if we work in my studio in my house, and everything is down on tape. And it's just a question of going into a studio uh, and recording what you've worked out. Then you could possibly do it in that time. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, but to do it like this, to, to have a whole, to have ten songs put in front of you and, and say, get these down in four days. Um, is impossible, <laughs> basically. Yeah. To, to get the best out of it. I mean, I, as I said, I think that the, this album is a very good indication of, of the potential. Um, this kind of working, um, being confronted with ten songs and have to record it in four days, isn't that um, a job which is not at all very lovely to do? No, it's horrible. <laughs> It's quite it's horrible to do. Um, I've never worked, as I said, myself in, in that amount of time. I mean, sometimes, even in, when I first started recording, you'd spend two days on one track. You know, 
to get it right. Mm -hmm. And it, when you have when you have that kind of time, you also have it's not just time for recording; it's time for ideas and changing things and looking at it. But when when you working with such a short period of time, um, you you don't have time to change things. You have to get it down and record it, and that's that. All right. Um, I guess we've got we have everything on tape. I said the right things. I probably never said the right things. Yeah, gonna Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, all the fans of Kevin Hayes in Belgium are waiting to know what you are going to do. Um, well next months, next years. Nice Can we expect you being here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Difficult question. Well, I'm. I've just started working again on. I've just started writing songs again after a period of about four years of not writing. Because, um, well, I've, I've made about eleven or twelve albums and. After a time, you just run out of things to say, and I run out of things to say. But um, I've just started again with it this year, in fact, and I hope, if it goes well, um, to have something out before the end of this year, to have a record on. And if I have a record, then I'll go back on the road, although I'm not mad about it, I'm not crazy about the idea. Unless, the, unless I can get something very definite in the new album. Uh, I don't like show business, basically. <laughs> I never have done. But why are you in it? <laughs> if you don't um, like it. Why am I in it? I didn't, I'm not, I just fell into it. <laughs> I, I don't know how I you got into it. You should have stayed in Malaysia. Yeah, I should have stayed in Malaysia and become a fisherman. It was really the, yeah. the deal. Um, but when I say I don't like show business, um, it doesn't mean to say I don't like shows that are well done and things that are well done at. And I don't like all the the things surrounding show business, all the bullshit and that's one of the reasons why um, I kind of dropped out of the business because I didn't go to the right parties and talk to the right people and say the right things at the right time yeah. If you are back on the road again uh, can we expect you in Belgium? Certainly, yeah I like playing here. I like playing here in Holland as well. And uh, I've always had the best audiences in, in Europe. Will be very in fact, I started, I think we started in Holland. The Soft Machine started in Holland. Yeah. Holland or France, was it? No, it was France. France. It was in so Paris. Yeah. France. Yeah. Les, what, what happened yeah. to Wes? Wes, uh, the guy who financed us, yeah, he yeah. thought he took too much acid and thought he was God and tried to stop a lorry one day. Unfortunately, he was squashed. Talking about Soft Machine, do you see some people of Soft Machine nowadays? No, because I live I live like a hermit, basically. I live in, a, in Mallorca, in a tiny village. I have a very big house, which is too big for me, in fact. And I'm kind of lost in it. And that's also been w one of the reasons why I haven't worked, because there's no stimulation at all to work. <laughs> if you can get by, I mean, I get, I still get some royalties for my records. And you can live very cheaply there. And uh, with the Spanish mentality of everything mañana becomes very infectious. And everything the next morning. You just... Uh, Turn around and suddenly three years have gone, you know, you don't even notice it. Uh, isn't it then strange uh, saying to Starvin Marvin, uh, you should get on the road, you should see people, you should do things so you can write yeah, songs. Because, uh, and being, uh, being a hermit age, for four years yourself. At his age, I was working my ass off, uh, all the, doing five or six gigs a week, every week. That Isn't was um, that was early soft machine days. We were running up and down um, all over England and and Europe for no money at all, practically, but working very hard, doing a lot of concerts, and it was fun. And I loved it. So Starvin Marvin, perhaps will find himself in a small cottage somewhere in Spain. 
What? In a year or ten, twenty? No. No. I think that the most important thing is that he um, he gets out on the road and s gets back into or gets into live performance because I it, it, gives, it gives you it gives you um, a, a better energy I think to go into a studio having just that behind you than just sitting in front of a tape recorder in your own yeah. house. It's true. I, I'm rather a live performance. I'm not even sure that, um, I mean, I, as far as I'm concerned, uh, involved with, with Marvin's group, uh, the way I see it is that um, they probably have an, another singer um, and that basically Marvin will be creating the fantasy of the music and the presentation. But um, he won't necessarily be out front all the time. Or Just like Frank Zappa, you know, he's putting in the jokes. You should be so lucky. That's why. <laughs> I'm going to choose you as singer. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, Belgium. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Jingle. Uh, in Netherlands. Yeah. What must I say? Give me a good day. I'll talk to you later. Wait, wait. Get more time. I've just said. Hello, so I'm Dudley from Kidmontown. Oh yeah, so I'm happy to be on the radio, radio uh, tour. Okay. Okay. okay, this is Starvin Marvin. Watch out for my newest record. Something interesting, you know. Uh, bye bye, uh, I love you all. Okay. Any messages to Belgium? <laughs> uh, turn me loose. Where you buy your camera? Uh, oh boy, nearby the paper shop, okay? <coughs> Glad to be back uh, as planned, the transmission as well is fine and everything is under control except for the per night androids. <laughs> <laughs>